Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com discussing perceptions of facts and truth. Seven years ago, climate scientist John Abraham wrote this angry letter to the St. Cloud, Minnesota Times. He said, On December 26, Rolf Westgard made a demonstrably false statement in the St. Cloud Times about climate change. Rolf stated, The Earth is overall warm in 2014, perhaps equaling 1998, and the mid-1930s is among the warmest years of the 21st century. Aside from the fact that 1998 and the 1930s were in the 20th century, his comments about the 1930s are false. The 1930s were warm in the United States, but they were cool globally. In fact, your readers can see that data for themselves at the NASA website. Here's the graph he linked to from the NASA website showing that the 1930s were among the coolest years on record globally. John Abraham said, No one can objectively look at that data and conclude that the 1930s were warm. They certainly were not anywhere near as warm as 2014. Westgard's other comment about the recent China-U.S. agreement on greenhouse gas emissions were misleading. He infers that the agreement simply allows China to continue emitting with little action until 2030. But in fact, the actions that China must take to reduce their emission rates actually exceed the actions of the United States. This view was articulated by an expert on the topic in a recent Guardian article from November 2014. Fact check. China pledged bigger climate action than the USA. Republican leaders wrong. So John Abraham's view of facts and truth is largely dependent on the integrity of these two guys as well as this writer at The Guardian. The other half of his claim is based on the accuracy of this drawing from NASA. He assumes that this drawing is representative of the actual history of the Earth since 1880. Most of this video will be devoted to fact-checking this drawing from NASA. But first, let's look at what China's been up to over the last seven years since John Abraham wrote that angry letter. He was wrong about China. Their emissions continue to skyrocket while United States emissions are dropping sharply. The New York Times recently reported, Desperate to meet its electricity needs, China is opening up new coal production exceeding what all of Western Europe mines in a year, at a tremendous cost to the global effort to fight climate change. John Abraham trusted three completely untrustworthy people as the second half of his claim. He wasn't doing science, he was simply showing his blindness to reality. Now let's analyze this graph from NASA, which shows the 1930s as one of the coldest decades on record. This sequence of photographs was in the November 1976 issue of National Geographic. This glacier in Austria retreated very rapidly from 1903 to 1940. And by 1956, the lower portion of the glacier had completely disappeared. Here's a story from 1950, huge glacier disappearing. Oslo, Norway, the Svartisan or Black Ice Glacier in North Norway is melting so rapidly it will have disappeared in 50 years according to a Tromso Museum expert. But the glacier is still there, so we know it's been melting more slowly over the last 70 years than it was in 1950. In 1948, the leading Arctic expert, Dr. Hans Allman from Sweden, wrote this article, The Present Climate Fluctuation. He confirmed the existence of the medieval warm period and said that at no time since 1400 has the climate been so favorable as it has been since the 1920s. He documented the rapid retreat of glaciers in 1869, 1933, and 1946. And he showed a tremendous amount of warming in Norway and Spitsbergen during the 1920s and 1930s. And it was the same story on the other side of the Atlantic. Experts were predicting the imminent demise of Glacier National Park. The glaciers were melting very rapidly, from 15 to 30 feet per year. But the glaciers are still there a hundred years later, so we know that the melting has slowed down considerably since the 1920s. Glaciers were melting very rapidly during the 1920s and the 1930s, yet NASA shows that period as being among the coldest years on record, which doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. This article from 1925 talked about very rapid warming in the Arctic and glaciers melting. In Spitsbergen, winter temperatures warmed nearly 16 degrees from 1910 to 1939. 
In 1939, all of the glaciers in eastern Greenland were rapidly melting, and like the glaciers in Norway, they faced the possibility of a catastrophic collapse. In 1947, the New York Times reported that Arctic air temperatures had increased 10 degrees Fahrenheit since 1900, an enormous rise from a scientific standpoint. Glaciers were melting everywhere, including Greenland, and people living along seashores faced catastrophic sea level rise. The behavior of the Arctic and other glaciers is not at all consistent with this NASA graph. In 1951, the Sydney Morning Herald reported that all glaciers examined from Greenland through Scandinavia to Europe are shrinking. The vast Muir Glacier in Alaska's Glacier Bay has retreated a full 14 miles since 1902. Lakes are drying up in Utah and Africa. 1954, polar ice caps melting, says expert. Dr. William S. Carlson, an Arctic expert, said last night that polar ice caps were melting at an astonishing and unexplained rate and threatening to swamp seaports by raising ocean levels. The glaciers of Norway and Alaska are only half the size they were 50 years ago. The temperature around Spitsbergen has so modified that the sailing time has lengthened from three to eight months of the year. The New York Times reported, Greenland's polar climate has moderated so consistently that communities of hunters have evolved into fishing villages. Sea mammals vanishing from the west coast have been replaced by codfish and other species in the area's southern waters. Glaciers were melting very rapidly during these three decades, which NASA shows as being among the coldest on record. It's pretty clear that this graph is not accurate. Ice doesn't lie, but climate scientists do. John Abraham's claim that the 1930s were cool globally is simply not true. John Abraham says he's a climate scientist, but he didn't do any actual research. His bold statement of facts and truth was based entirely on hearsay and trusting untrustworthy people. In order to keep this video short, I'm going to split it up into three parts. In the next part, I'll show how NASA has abused the data in order to make the warmth of the 1930s and 1940s disappear. This is what NASA reports to the public, but this is what the actual data shows. Toto will be making part two of this video soon. In the meantime, visit him, Kyrie, and Caesar on the web at realclimatescience.com.